everything you need to know about ground handling in 10 minutes. Let's go. Boom. Gloves, helmets, good harness. Make sure you got them. Get your glider ready parallel to the wind so that it's not going to get blown around. Gives you time to check all of your lines without it being pulled. Then you take your risers, roll them and connect them onto your harness. Pull the risers straight down, let them hang down and get your brakes. That way you know it's not going to be twisted. Now I can sort out walking around into wind. So I'm going to pull the brake and just walk around until the glide is nicely in a wall. Come around to your midpoint where the center will be the highest. If I go too far, this side will be higher. If I go too far this side, this side's higher. So there's a middle point. Find where that is. And remember that, that line you want to follow the whole time. It's the same as a windsock. So just leaning back a little bit and I'm pulling the brakes just to bring the glider down. Just play around a little bit of that. Get the feeling of the glider going just off the surface of the ground. Try and get it to the point where you can just gently settle it down without it going whack. So I've got brakes on, but now I'm easing off the brakes. That's what you want to build up the ability to do. So when it comes down on the brakes, I'm releasing a little bit. Come back to here. Here's what happens. If I just pull both brakes, whack. Now what happens if I pull the brakes to get it stalling and now I come off the brakes. See how much gentler it is. So you don't need the brakes all the way down to the ground. You just need them to bring the glider back down towards the ground, then come off and then just use enough to pin the glider down. Now the same exercise with the back risers. Get both back risers in one hand, both the A's in the other, and just let the glider come up and bring it down again. Up and down. So you're getting used to using the back risers now. And eventually you can get it to just float off the ground, somewhere in between pulling the back risers and pulling the front risers. There'll be a position there where you can just float it. That's what you want to try and do is just build up that feeling and then letting it come up, pulling the back risers to bring it back down, easing off the back risers gently. The wing will move around a little bit as the gusts come through, but generally it's going to stay in this downwind position from you. Okay, that's got the power control going. Now I want you to practice pulling up and running towards the wing. And you see it has a similar effect. If I pull up and I run away from the wing, whoa, it comes up and it gets a lot of power. Running towards the wing depowers it. You can use it a lot while you're doing your launches. So I'm pulling on the A's and now I'm running at the wing enough to put it back down on the ground. Then you do the same thing, but you just ease off on that running so that you keep the glider in a steady position. Putting the glider here, I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to run towards it to keep it just in the same position. And that gives you a very, very slow pull up without a lot of power. Same again, I'm just using the A's and I'm going to run towards the glider. And now you can start steering. As it comes up, I'm using my hand on the A's and I'm swapping. So I'm keeping tension on the A's and I'm just swapping over and I'm using the free hand for the braking. Don't do a lot of this because the glider will roll a lot. It's just a little bit of input. So now I'm pulling up, I'm going towards the wing and I'm using my brakes just to gently control it. Now that's just a bit of practice when you're actually launching, you don't want to be using a lot of brake. You want to just bring the wing up all the way. But this is good for kiting uphill. So normally a pull-up would look like this. I bring it up and I just do very fine control. And I'd be using my body movement to depower. So it gives me time for this next move that you want to practice turning through and holding the brakes and then easing off. So when it's over here, when it's slightly back here, you don't want to turn here because that's too early and the wing might stall. So it's practicing getting it to this point, that sort of angle, 
and then turning. And when you're turning, make sure that you're not turning with your feet level with each other. That's a common mistake. Don't do it like this, where you stand square with your feet parallel and then have to try and turn from that position because it'll end up destabilizing the glider. Instead of turning from this position all the way around, is put one foot back. So from this position, I'm still facing the glider and I can rotate very easily without moving my head height. So work on that, bring the wing up and then do that turn. If your back leg is like this, you just turn out. That helps avoid the glider surging off to the side while you're doing your turn. The lighter the wind is, the more you have to keep moving into wind to add a little bit of airspeed. And as the glider falls, always try and move downwind. That'll help the glider fall on its back. Often while you're ground handling, your glider will dump on the ground and then end up in a difficult position. Don't waste time fighting it. Just start and bunch the glider up. You put the risers together, keep the brakes on so that if you, the glider blows up, you've still got control. But pull the brake back and then grab the lines. Even better, if it's windy, is to take the back risers and make a little step with the back risers. So you pull those in slightly before you grab all the lines and pinch them. That way the glider is depowered. Even if it blows open, it's not going to run away from you. Then what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing the lines. Make sure it's all free here. Grab the lines, run your hand along, grip it tight, loop it into your hand, up to the wing. Just bunching it like this, setting it down again. Set it down with the center of the leading edge downwind of you. So that's this piece. I've set that up so that that's the most important bit to fill and it's directly downwind of me. Then you go to the one side, get the wingtip fabric and pull it back in a V. Same with the other side, pull it back in a V. That way you've got the center ready for your pull-up. Now I'm going straight back into wind, down the lines, get back here, cross my risers at my body, give the gliders a little, a little shake, and then from there I can pull up again, and off we go. It also helps walking around past the wingtip when you're bunching it, and that way you don't gather the wind as you're spreading the glider out. Don't fight it when the wind gets very, very light. You'll get very tired, and you need a bit of wind for this to work. So just take a rest and wait for some breeze. You want kind of five kilometers an hour at least, maybe 10 kilometers an hour ideal to about 20. That's a good range. So you can help yourself a lot by coming to a site that's good for ground handling and a flying site is ideal for that, depending on the space that you've got at the flying site. But it's often land that you've got permission already to use the glider and it's on raised ground so you get smooth airflow. So it's very easy to ground handle. And I often use this place when it's not flyable but the wind's gone off the flyable direction. So that means the pilots aren't here, you're not in anybody's way, but you've still got the area to play in. And then the other thing I'm doing here is I've got a very small ground training wing. This is really useful for taking out the power so that you're not intimidated and you can work on technique and you can get a lot more ground handling in because it's cheap. It doesn't matter if you damage it on the ground. So you're not taking value off your main wing and it gives you that time and that space to develop technique. And then you can map it straight onto your main glider. So consider that as a way to level up. Uh, maybe you can get together with a few friends and share the cost of a cheap glider like this or pass it around the club. You'll get a lot of dodgy advice from various people across the internet. But one thing you can rely on is a cross-country windsock. You can buy it in different sizes depending on the strength of wind you want and different directions that'll suit your sight. Make sure you get yours on cross-country mag. It's the only one that works. Seriously though, the wind direction is really critical. So have something that you can see what the wind's doing and make sure you're always getting the glider downwind of you before you do your pull-up because that can really mess with your technique if you're not lined up. That's the first thing and make sure that's always right and it's always checked. And then control the power by how much you're moving at the wing. Control the twist the way it's yawing with a little bit of brake but keep it easy. And then once it's overhead, a little bit of brake just to stop it overshooting. Control it in that position and when it's nicely controlled, practice on the turn through so you're facing forward, ready to fly, turn back. As it drops, move towards the wing and try and make it gentle and touch down and then play with A's and C's to take it back up the slope. And repeat, have fun, get really good at this and your launches will be super easy. Job done.
Hey, I had a challenge for you. Ground handle while sitting down. It'll change the dynamic. You won't be able to run. Everything will have, you have to be done on timing and very fine brake control. <laughs> Give it a go. Hey, if you want to get really good at this, take my ground control course on flywithgreg.com. There's over seven hours of videos going through many exercises, all the different techniques. It'll take your ground control to a new level and you'll be able to walk out to any launch site in the world with confidence with complete glider control. Check it out, it's only available on my website and it's part of your membership as an Academy member. So start your free trial and take it away.